uh, Green Bean program. And uh, she will present it and answer for the question. Well, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming today. I'm really happy to see a good crowd of people coming out to learn about the Green Bin program. Um, as was said, my name is Kathy, and I work for the City of Toronto. Our area is called Solid Waste Management Services. And uh, so what myself and my colleagues have been doing a lot lately is coming out to buildings like this one and introducing the Green Bin program. The Green Bin program is for food waste. And, oh, go ahead. <laughs> and uh, we make a really great compost out of the food waste that we gather. So that's why I'm here to tell you about it, uh, because it's a really good program for the buildings, it's a really good program environmentally, and it really helps the city out a whole lot. So I'll, I'll tell you how you can do your part, um, how you can participate in the program, and I hope that uh, you get a lot out of it, and that it um, becomes a a habit for you to put stuff in the green bin rather than the garbage. Um, we definitely appreciate you doing that for us. So as I mentioned, the green bin is a compost program. It's for food waste. So you will have three different ways to throw out your everyday things. You'll have your garbage, you'll have your recycling, and those you'll keep doing just as you've always been doing. But now you'll also have an extra stream of waste that's food waste. Now, we talk a lot in my office about diversion, waste diversion. What that means is to divert it out of the landfill, so to keep things from going to the landfill. And recycling and green bin are diversion programs. Now in houses, single family homes in that category of houses, about 65% of the things that people get rid of don't go into the garbage. So that's pretty good. Unfortunately, in multi-residential, so nine units or more, it's at 24%. So quite a bit lower than in single family homes. That's why we're doing this outreach. That's why we're introducing the bean bin, and that's why we're asking for help. Right now, what we do when we have garbage is it goes, the big trucks, goes on the 401, and goes near London, Ontario. It goes in the landfill. There's so long that we can do that at our current rate, and then we'll have to come up with another solution. We're working on that, but the best thing to do is to not send it down the 401 west to London in the first place. Keep it out of our landfill. Um, city owns that landfill. It's called Green Lane Landfill, and it's a, it's a, you know, one solution, but it's better if it doesn't go there at all. Both recycling and green bin allow us to keep it out of the landfill, make it into something new through recycling, and make it into compost through the green bin program. So today, that's what I'm going to be talking about. What goes in the green bin? How to use it in this building? And then any questions you have. Okay? So you each probably received one of these. This we call the kitchen container. It's just a little simple plastic container. When you got it, you probably saw there was a, a note inside about what can be collected in the green bin, as well as two screws. Back here, there's two little slots. So if you do want to mount it on the back of a cupboard or something, you can do that. Just see how far apart to put them from here. And then the, the screw head just slide in there. So that's optional. It's totally up to you. What I do with mine at home, some people like this idea, some people don't. But what I do, I keep it in my fridge. That's because I'm a really busy person, and I don't get out that often to take out my material. So I get out the food, chop it all up, prepare the dinner, clean up after my toddler, sweep up the floor, clean up the table, scrape off the plate, and put it in here, slide it back in the fridge. It's totally up to you. You can take it out as often as you want. Your pickup day where the city comes to empty the bin is Mondays. So if you do want to take it out on Sundays, that's maybe a convenient way to do it. As you can see, my kitchen container that I have right here is lined with a plastic bag. This particular plastic bag is from a convenience store. It can be any plastic bag. You don't have to go and buy a special biodegradable. Any kind of bag will do. Um, it can be from a grocery store, convenience store, shopping, shopping center, whatever. Some cities, they don't want you to use bags. and some cities, they want you to use a special kind of bag. In Toronto, it's just anything. 
And I can talk a bit about how it's processed because we actually get the bag out afterwards. The plastic comes out before we make the compost. Um, so that's the way we've designed our system and set it up. And it's for your convenience so that it's all contained. You'll put your food waste in there and take it up, take it out, do it up loosely and drop it in the, the big green bin. In this building, it's in the P1 level. It's a dark green color and it's made of steel. There's two little plastic lids that slide up. So you slide it up and drop it in. Bag it off. Is it there now? Yes. There now. Yeah, because you can hear the recycling. So maybe you can take out your recycling and your green bin at the same time. No twist ties? No twist. Don't use twist ties. You can twist the bag closed to sort of knot it up, but you don't want to add any other clasps or tie, anything like that. You also don't want to over package your food. So for example, if you have a bag of baby carrots and they've gone off, instead of throwing the whole plastic bag inside this plastic bag, if you can just open the carrot bag and put the carrots in. The purpose of this is to make it convenient for you so we can handle some plastic, but we don't want a lot of plastic in it. One of the key examples of that actually is cucumbers that are covered with plastic wrap. You want to take that sleeve off for us. So that's just doing the city a favor, helping us with the processing side of it. So what will you put in that bin? Um, people over here might not be able to see, so I'll just, is that pretty good? Now you can't see the screen, but um, there's a handout with this on as well. So you can take it home if you can't see it. It's all fruits and vegetables, peels, cores, even an avocado pit. It's just fine. That can go in. Meats, including bones and skin, grains, raw or cooked, it doesn't matter, cereal. Um, any kind of candies or sweets is fine. You can maybe see there's some nuts in here too. And the nut shells can go in as well. So that's just fine. Dairy can go in and eggs, uh, eggshells, they're, they're good as well. So any of your foods, anything that you'd eat can go in. Um, and then some other things that might surprise you. So coffee grounds and tea bags. So paper that's associated with the food. The coffee grounds and the coffee filter can go in. The plastic, or sorry, the, the paper ones. Paper is a, a natural product as well. It's made from trees, so that pulp, that will pulp down and become rich compost as well. A really key example of that is, for example, when you get a muffin, often there's a paper on the bottom. That paper can go in the green bin. So it might uh, be a bit oily or something. And that's, yeah, it's something that will break down and it's associated with food, so that's just fine. Same with Kleenex can go in, or tissues, napkins, those things are, again, they're paper products that compost just fine. Uh, you might be surprised, too, of some things you might not think of off the top of your head, but um, bags, sugar bags, or flower bags that are paper, that's just fine. That can go in the green bin. Um, you can probably see it up here as well. So that's these, these images. Kitty litter can go in or animal, other animal waste. So if you have a rabbit or a gerbil and you have wood chips as their bedding, that can go in. If you have a dog, the dog no poop dog. can go no in. Dog. No dogs allowed? Okay. <laughs> um, but house plants, maybe you have house plants. If unfortunately they've not uh, been doing so well and you want to get rid of them, they can go in as well as the soil that's around the roots. Because that will decompose, that'll break down and become good compost too. Why can you just dump the pot in the big green bin downstairs? That'd be okay, yeah. You don't have to put it in something. You could put it in a plastic bag to contain it, um, but it's, it's you pretty don't much have fine every way, every which way. Yeah, it's not a really gross item. So, yeah. And another question back there. Oh, the question was about a house plant. If you have a potted house plant, can you carry it down to the recycling room and, and empty it into the green bin? And that's far as 
fine as far as I'm concerned. I, I'm not sure if the speaker would have some more feedback on that, but. So in other words, you can mix up anything there. It really doesn't have to go in the bag. You should use a bag for your household food waste. But a house plant is just, it's fairly, probably fairly dry and. You could just dump it there. This is a house plant, yeah. If you have anything like, if you do have the animal waste, <coughs> things like that, you want to contain it so it doesn't make the size of the container gross. It's just, um, you know, for convenience of your superintendent that you would want to contain things. Yeah. And can you put this in every day? You can put it in every day if enough. you'd like to. Yeah. If you, what I would also do is I would take my green bin out when I take my recycling out. It's just easier that way for me. So um, take them both down and drop them both in the proper container. This mm -hmm. is the point our recycling oh, is on the floors. So yes. we have, this is an additional thing we have to go all the way down. In this garbage, right. we, need, we put both our garbage in the chute and the recycling we need in the room by the elevator on each floor. Okay, so in this building, with the addition of the green bin, it will be at P1 level. Um, just be, yeah, yeah. You probably don't want to have them in the recycling room. Your just, participation you know, rate can drop. Well, it, 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 apparently it's not in the recycling room. I've just been to the recycling room, and I don't see anything there. Is that true, Tom? Is this whatever it is? It's, it's there. In? It's there, but... In the recycling yeah, room? Yeah. Yeah. Downstairs. Downstairs. Yeah, I, that's where I P1. went. I went to P1. It's there. Room. It says no garbage, right, on the outside. Uh -huh. But you don't ignore that no I garbage. That. <laughs> For years and years, we have to take that sign down. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see anything in there other than a couple of big It's bins. in the it's in left, left side. What? It's in the left side. Where are the mattresses are? Yeah. <laughs> well, for a moment, yeah, the mattresses. <laughs> And was there, is there a reason why, I mean, do all the buildings do this? They don't have the, the collection right on the floor? It depends on the building. I, I haven't looked in your recycle, or sorry, in your shoot room, so I don't know what they look like. Um, it depends on a number of factors, ventilation and such as well. So you, yeah, you can uh, keep in touch with the superintendents and the property manager to get feedback. And they'll keep in touch with us in turn. So if there's concerns, then we can work through it. So if people we, aren't participating, it's going to be very hard to know, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we do encourage you to participate. Um, well, of I course, do. there won't be everyone doing it every, you know, there might be some that get through, and that's life. But the most you can do, the better, right? Mm -hmm. So the more you can do, the better. Mm -hmm. Point where this could be it could be fine if it exceeds certain level. There's not a fine, um, but what there is is in terms of incentive is that the buildings pay for garbage pickup. They do not pay for recycling, and they do not pay for yak. Diversion programs are run completely free by the city, whereas garbage is always billed. So that's the incentive. Mm -hmm. So technically, this will save this corporation money by people participating because our waste bill should go down. That's the idea. It, like if 65, and I'm from a house, I know. Right. My garbage just went down to nothing yeah. with this program. However, uh, I didn't have to lug it all over the place. And that's what you, I'll talk to you soon about that. But, yeah. So there is a, a financial incentive for this corporation to make this program work. Yeah, and you're right. In houses, they also pay for garbage. They don't pay for recycling, they don't pay for green bins. And what we've seen from waste audits is that it can be about almost to 50% of what people are throwing out is food. It's a really big chunk of your day-to-day -day waste. And what we also hear from people <coughs> is that once you've started composting, once you've gotten into that habit of separating out your food waste, to go back, it starts to feel really counterintuitive. And you start to really notice, like, whoa, that's quite a big mass. You may not notice it if you're every day throwing it down the chute and whatnot, but if you've done it for a while and then you start going back, you notice. And yeah, and hopefully we'll start to notice in terms of our number of trucks on the road to go to the landfill and our number of pickups and things like that too. It's a new program for multi-res. It's been really well established. 
selfish and hoses and now you guys are the ones sort of at the forefront of making it work in the multi-residential section. Okay. I want to do other comments. Uh, um, you, said, you said about uh, you know recycling 24%. Mm. We are doing maybe more than 34, uh, probably 40%. And uh, we try to add it uh, starting, you know, uh, mm. with the uh, uh, green uh, garbage. I don't know if you if we will go to 60, but uh, wherever we will start, still it's a test for us. To see how it's working, and uh, you know, in time, maybe we'll uh, uh, making uh, more, ma much better the yeah. system. Yeah, I'm quite hopeful to hear that because in buildings where recycling's been successful, that's where they're most successful with organic as well. Question here. Uh, two questions. Uh -huh. Are we the first ones to do that, or is it being tried somewhere else? In the city? No, it's all across the city. Yeah. So this in the past year year and a half or so, that's when we've been rolling it out. And we're just really now, there's a big push to get the bins out, to get the presentations done. Um, so it's just beginning, but it's all across the city. Any city of Toronto customer of ours, so any, any corporation, any um, building that has garbage picked up from us actually must have diversion in place as well. That's a, a city council passed that bylaw. Um, but uh, since you've been at it for a year, has mm -hmm. there been any audit or study as to the uh, how effective, how well embraced it is by the people, or you don't know that yet? Well, the pilots were more before it was started. Um, so we're still, I mean, they're still getting a lot of buildings on board. It's still new. Um, I don't have too many statistics so far of what going out there but I I do it every day you know I'm in buildings all the time so I see yeah. uh, I must say that mm -hmm. uh, I embrace the idea of uh, green earth and recycling and whatnot but I also read a book called the death of common sense saying how ideas that are wonderful and uh, very noble in mm -hmm. their conception are not necessarily applicable to all situations right. and here if you look and I wouldn't insult anybody here but by looking at this assembly uh, we're not quite the juvenile league or the youth club <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm in my 70s I'm a veteran and I hardly picture myself with my little bag my half a uh, dead fish and some uh, uh, potato peels and eggshells going through the garage yeah. in the oh, dead of winter yeah. when the door is open yeah. it is right. minus 30 and there's a car coming yeah. that is in a rush to get into the garage or the rush to get out. Uh, I, I, I believe that noble as the idea might be the practicality of it uh, right. not sure. So the way I'd respond to that is for sure use your common sense, you know, you want to do it in the way that works for you. And some ideas, um, I've been to lots of buildings, I've heard lots of ideas that people have had. Sometimes people buddy up and take it out at once, you know, take a couple bags, um, keeping it in a, a fridge or freezer so that you just make one trip a week is another way to do it. Sometimes people cook in batches and then take it all at once. It's, it's one of those household things, right? It's like we go to buy groceries and we have to wash our bathtubs and it's kind of, it's one of these things. Um, we're asking you to do what you can because it, because it helps out a lot. Okay? Yeah. I think this is a question for each end, but I'm wondering why we can't drop our um, green bin stuff directly down the chute. And can we do these our bins for the recyclables okay. and carry down our household garbage, which is much less frequent than green bin stuff? Our system, it's unique, you know, it's only for garbage. Uh, you know, the new condos, they have tri sorters, which, uh, you know, it's for organic, for recycling, and uh, for the garbage. But this uh, system, you know, uh, it's working very hardly in a high rise because 
wherever someone is coming to drop the organic, other doors are locked till the you know the the the, the bag is not uh, you know in a bin. Other doors doesn't open, and who will stay? You know, waiting yeah. ten minutes to drop a bag of garbage. And, and is, our, is there a possibility of upgrading our system? It's it's a possibility only when we change the compactor, which is yeah. a little bit uh, you know. Is that a possibility? Mr. It it is a possibility. That was the reason we are still in like a building test for us, how to so see how it's working. I know, I know. We, we discussed these things and, uh, you know, for a moment because it's a winter, I said, uh, you know, uh, you know, it's not a uh, uh, smelly situation. And I said to, in a spring to, to, to re re review this, um, this uh, garbage green. Uh, that was the reason in my uh, newsletter I said to put it Friday, uh, Saturday, because Monday it's a collection. For a moment, will not be a, a smell, yeah, because, uh, yeah. But we'll see during the summer, because summer will be more, uh, you know, organic with fruit, uh, you know. Exactly. Laura's experience in other buildings been with odor, bugs, vermin. Yeah, well, um, there's lots of different categories there, but generally what I tend to see when I'm out and about is that the buildings that are well managed do well. So, yeah, how about, how about, you know, a plastic bin with a lid in each of the uh, elevator recycling rooms so that then when whoever comes from the building to pick up the, the paper stuff could pick up that one too. I mean, it, it seems it would be a similar kind of process. You know what I would say is give it a go this way first. Get your feet wet. Um, give it a go. And, uh, and then give feedback. Continue that conversation as the program is running. Okay. You know what I would like to say? First of all, I would like to hear you from the point of view of the green bin, and then we up here, then the seventh part would be for us to give suggestions to management, and then we see how best we can use it. Because right now, I'm more interested to find out exactly how the government is doing it, yeah. and the practical application depends on where you live. Right. So I have another question. You told us it's good to put it in a plastic bag, and then somebody has a pot there with everything, and that can just mm -hmm. be done. I cannot put it in my head. You know what I mean? I thought the purpose of that garbage bag is to make it cleaner, at least, and then we're dumping everything. So when no, I find eggplant. Yeah, addiction. use the use the plastic bag. I was just suggesting with the, the plant if it's too big, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's better to put it in a plastic bag. So everything. Yeah. Because I cannot no. imagine once I start dumping that plant and I will say, What's the use of this plastic bag then? I can right. just dump no, everything. The plastic bag is intended for your convenience to be able to keep your kitchen container a little neater and to be able to keep the bin itself, the, you know, the big collection yeah, bin neater. Up the bin. So uh, your superintendent would do that. So if you can do anything you can to help keep that clean by using your plastic bag, that's great. That's right. And now what we're doing is um, the City of Toronto designed our system to be able to extract the plastic bags. Mm. So after our truck comes here, picks it up on Mondays and takes it to our processing facility. At our processing facility, it's put into a big vat called a hydropulper. Now that opens all the bags. It has a series of blades and, and forks. And what happens is that the plastic floats to the surface. Then that can be scooped off. And that plastic actually goes back to the garbage. It goes back to the landfill at that point um, because it doesn't decompose, it's, it's plastic. 
but that has allowed you to use those bags, you know, for your convenience. Um, other cities don't have that hydrocopper, and so you might hear in a different city or someone else, a friend might say, oh no, you need a biodegradable bag. That's not the case in Toronto because we built the technology to, to extract the plastic. Mm -hmm. The Minto apartment, 66 Pacific and so on, have had this for over a year, I think. What results have you from that small experiment? That building, I'm not, I don't know the specifics of a, you know, particular building, but we do see the results that they can decrease their garbage. Um, I don't, I don't, just don't have the statistics with me, but uh, I know that from our pilots, it was about 50% of their garbage was organic. So if you're having 100% participation, everything's going into the green bin, you can really bring down the amount of garbage. Yeah. I've learned that during the summer, I put my my garbage in a freezer, and I throw mm -hmm. it out like the night before the pit of garbage work or pit is yeah. picked up. And I find that it works well. You know, it's out of the way. Mm -hmm. It's just uh, I've been doing this for a while, just it's separating the food particles and putting them in the freezer yeah. and then throwing them out because of the smell. I've heard that from a lot of people. I don't know if people at the back could hear, but she's just making a comment that the food waste can be separated and put in the freezer, and that that keeps it tucked away in a in a bag, and then you can just take that out at once. So I think that's a great idea. I've heard I've heard that feedback other places. Um, personally, I, I keep it in my fridge, and uh, I've also heard people keep it on their balconies if there's balconies. Um, depending on the during situation, the during the winter, during the winter, yeah. I mean, yeah, and then take it down. I have a question. Mm -hmm. Since the city has invested in technology, has the city invested in promoting the best kind of container for buildings like this? Right. So there's two. There's actually three different kinds of containers. There's the personal container. This yeah. kitchen container. We is that that. No, no. Yeah. You're referring to the I am, external... I am piggybacking on to what the gentleman in the second row mentioned, the potential hazard, which is very real because it's happening in other buildings where I know people of rodents and insects. And once there's an infestation, it's very hard and very expensive to get. So the bin that you have in P1 Yes. It's, we call it a front-end bin because the type of truck that comes that picks it up over the front of the truck. It's made of steel and it sits quite a bit, about a foot off the ground on wheels. <laughs> so it would be actually quite difficult for a rodent to get inside it. It does have sliding lids on the top. So you'll see, when you see it, you'll see the front is lower than the back and there's a big steel lid that's really, a rodent couldn't open that lid, that's closed. And then there's little doors in that sloped lid that you slide up, drop your bag in, and then slide back closed. So um, that should keep the pests out of the central location. Do you have stats yeah. on how effective that has been in the past year and a half in the piloting? Well, the buildings um, do their own rodent control most of the time. Like the, the property managers uh, do their rodent control. So we haven't had too much testing on ourselves because we don't do the rodent control, but it would be the same. One thing to remember here is it's the same materials that you're always throwing out, right? So you're not producing anything mm -hmm. yeah. new. You're just putting it into a different That's container. Right. So you're, you're separating the stream, but you'd have garbage. You'd have it in the garbage if you didn't have it in the green bin. Mm -hmm. So the containers are essentially the same and the material is essentially the same. Just I just separated. thought that uh, the garbage, I never thought about that, but I thought up to the present time, once you shoot down, somebody has already thought about that, and we don't deal with the garbage, so it's a very mm -hmm. responsible person who deals with that and always makes sure that the lid is closed. It's just one absent-minded day and you leave the lid open. That is what where I'm coming from because it has happened in other buildings. Yeah, you'll keep an eye, you know, everyone can keep an eye on it, but it should be 
quite contained in that front end bin because it's off the ground. It's solid steel. Thank you. So it should be. Mm -hmm. and the, sorry. Okay, let's go here. Um, have you had any? Have you got any feedback yet on this green lid container that you can buy at Home Hardware? Right? I read about that in the paper, but I we haven't had any feedback on that. It's quite a new it's thing. It's a very interesting idea. Yeah. Where you go and you buy these biodegradable mm -hmm. containers instead yeah. of that plastic one there. And it seals up, and you plop the whole thing <laughs> right. so in the bin. What she's referring to is there was something, I think it was on Dragon's Den, it was. actually. Um, yeah. And it's a container like this that, that is designed to break down. It's made of paper, actually. And right. it's very strong. It holds all kinds of liquid. And it has a sealed pot, a paper lid, and you just plop the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you would have to purchase them individually and you would have to keep buying them so it, it could be a bit pricey. But it was an interesting show. I, I didn't see the actual show, I just read about it. But yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I lived in a house where that one was never come off. You used to just put the whole thing. Great. We had a, um, uh, you know, one of those green wheelie things outside. So mm -hmm. you just put it out on your way out and dump it in there. The problem that I had and that I'm worried about here is that. It's very hard if you're throwing away all of this juicy organic stuff for it not to develop a lot of liquid inside. And that tends to leak. So, um, I mean, you try double bagging it, and that does pretty well, although then that increases the amount of bags you've got. Right. But here we have to carry it down the carpeted hall and into the elevator, and down the elevator into the floor. And um, it would be a miracle if there weren't little drips. Yeah, you want to carry it in your container. Well, hold it each way? Yes. No. It really depends on how much you, you uh, cook. Yeah, that's a really important point, though, uh, that she just made. And and the way to deal with that is to carry that down to P1 and then close the bag and put it. Um, so you can't do it on your way out. I wouldn't carry the bag to the hall. I wouldn't carry the bag to the hall. No. Another thing you can do, so I, I really like that suggestion of carrying this down. Um, but just to add one more idea as well is that the paper towel and the tissue can go in there and that can absorb some of the moisture. Um, so that's one other thing. But I agree, you have to watch, you know, if you're putting your soggy cereal in a bag, you don't, you definitely have to be responsible about those trips. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you say that uh, the bin, bin downstairs, is taller. How is a short person? I'm I'm fine. I'm sure I will be able to. Mm -hmm. There is shorter people who will not be able to reach yeah. up and see what they're doing. I would think. Right. It's, it's possible. Yeah. 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 Yes. I, I agree. But yeah. It's, some buildings have different things. Some buildings have it, you know, set at a lower place where there's a where there's a natural step in the pavement, things like that. Um, so that's possible. Some places do have a step, but uh, I don't have any specifics for this building because I haven't actually seen the physics of it. Um, but another thing too is to be aware of your neighbors. And there is a program called the 3R Ambassador Program that the city runs. And if there's a, a keener in the group that would like to take that on and be the 3R Ambassadors, uh, get some resources from the city and then bring it back to help educate the other people in the building and to help. Sometimes there's things like buddy systems where you know you take it down with with your own when you take your neighbors down with your own when you're going down. So if you do know of people in the building that, that you know might need a bit of help, then please feel free to be neighbors. And we also have an energy committee within yeah. the building. So they should be able to help as well. Mm -hmm. So there might be resources there and other parts of it as well. Okay. Are there more questions about what to put in or what to not put in? That's, yeah, there's oh, no, just one more on okay. your tips at the bottom. Mm -hmm. where you've made it very clear, do not use yeah. biodegradable bags. Mm -hmm. Is that because they could fall apart after this? That's speech? because they can fall apart, yeah. They start the whole decomposing. And or yeah, the mm -hmm. They won't decompose properly in our system. We just, we had to make oh. that decision. The city had to decide, get people to use the biodegradable bags 
or fill the system that doesn't use biodegradable bags that may be more convenient for people. And we went the way of the plastic bags when we designed the whole technological system. It's actually, the processing side of things is really, I think it's really great in Toronto. It's a really interesting system, I think, um, because it can take out that plastic at the beginning. And then the next step is the anaerobic digestion. So it's again in an enclosed system, uh, there's no oxygen and it starts to break down. Now in that stage, there's, well, there's always a lot of methane that would come off of decomposing food, right? And that's a greenhouse gas. So in landfill, that's always something that's been uh, quite a bit of work to have that captured. In the organics processing, we can capture the methane and we generate electricity from that. So the plant itself is powered from the, the gases coming off the material. Yeah, and there's even enough electricity, there's surplus electricity. So hopefully we'll be able to sell that back to the grid as well. So it's a pretty neat system. And, uh, and then the final stage is aerobic digestion. So it's just put out in windrows, just basically long tunnels of, of compost lined up. It's exposed to the air, the microorganisms get back to work a little bit more on it and um, naturally occurring bacteria is in there, the worms can come into it at that stage and break it down even further. Now, before it's released uh, back to the community, the Ministry of the Environment follows up with us and they test it. They make sure that it meets the conditions for unrestricted use. What that means is it's unrestricted use that can be used on crops, it can be used in gardens, that sort of thing. And what we do here is we bring it back into the city, we put it on parks, in our, in our local city park, Hyde Park, for example, um, and we give it away to the community at environment days, we give it uh, through counselors, specials, so it's, it's a good <coughs> material in the end that's very nutrient rich, it can be used on crops. So yeah, it sort of does full circle and it, it generates something really good in the end. Does this include bones? It does include bones. Yeah, bones can go in. This card, uh, I can give this out to people too. It just explains more of what goes in as well as what does not go in. Uh, some common mistakes I mentioned about the extra packaging on the food. Um, a few other things that we commonly find, uh, for example, dryer sheets should not go in. They're not uh, biodegradable and they can have chemicals on them. Same with, for example, I mentioned that paper products that are associated with food can go in. So the example of that, for instance, would be a paper towel and you've been frying some bacon and you put it on the paper towel to get off the extra oil. That goes in. But say you're using that paper towel to wash windows and you put a chemical on it or some kind of cleaning solvent, you don't want to put that in the compost because it doesn't break down naturally and because it's not good uh, for the compost in the end. So this lists some of the no's as well as the yeses. Okay. I'm also going to leave this poster here, so this can go up around the building. I like this one because it has three different categories. It has the organics, but it also shows some examples of what's left over from the garbage and what goes in the recycling. And a really easy, very simplified way of saying it is that your food waste goes in the green bin, your food container goes in the blue bin, and remaining things that you might have around that are no good anymore, go in the garbage. Um, what goes in the recycling is a little more complicated, I find. You get more questions often about that than what goes in the green bin. Um, mostly because plastics confuse people. But just to be very general again about it, the plastic food containers like your tubs and lids and uh, squeeze bottles, those are recyclable. Mm -hmm. Is there um, the garbage or is it uh, a bin for paper magazines? <laughs> what happens to it? That goes in the recycling as well. That's part of the, the city's blue bin program. So when we get all of these things, um, like your beverage containers or your home personal product containers or your papers, that all goes in the same truck and goes to what we call the MRF. That's where the recycling is all sorted out. And they make like batches. They make batches of paper, batches of glass, 
batches of each separate different kind of plastic. And then we sell it on the recycling market. And we have a lot of technology for sorting as well. So different magnets for the steel, um, blowers, because aluminum is very light, so we can just kind of pop off the pop cans. If you ever see a video of that, it's kind of funny to watch these things flying in different directions. Um, so it all gets sorted at our facility. Yeah. So the, the recycling of the paper and that all goes, I know it's like mostly from a house. It all went into one big little bin. Mm -hmm. And the building, they're separating them. Is there any benefit to our separating them at this point up on the floor? I, do, I don't know why that's that. being done uh, unless they just, maybe it keeps the containers more clean and it's more convenient for the super. I'm not sure if there's an internal reason. I from the city's you. perspective, there's not. Yeah. I can tell you why. Because when they have the bins inside um, the elevator, they have two bins. One for paper, because then it pushes down. Mm -hmm. If you put the whole thing in, then it explodes higher. So they have the tin cans and glass in one, and they have paper, everything paper, and in another. And it just makes it far more convenient yeah. for them. One of the points that I hear back from buildings a lot is cardboard boxes cause problems in people's recycling in buildings, because people don't always flatten their boxes, and it takes up a lot of space in the recycling bins. So I, that might be, you know, connected yeah. to is that if the cardboard boxes are taking up the, you know, three quarters of a recycling bin, then it just doesn't make space for the other things. So it's quite common that that's dealt with internally in the building. Mm -hmm. Is there any kind of plastic that doesn't go either in recycling or in the green bin that we need to get rid of? Yeah, plastic is the trickiest thing. So you're not putting any plastic in the green bin except for your liner on your container. In the recycling, the plastic that doesn't go in the blue bin, there's plastic film that's saran wrap that can't be recycled. Saran wrap. Saran wrap cannot be recycled. That tricks people up a lot. And black plastic. Black. Our processing, yeah. Swiss chalet containers, please. Right. So Swiss chalet is an example. Right. Often you get a takeout meal that has a black bottom and a clear top. Our technology just can't identify the properties of plastic when it's black, unfortunately. So we can't recycle it. Yeah. We can recycle the top. We can recycle the top. It's clear plastic, they're just fine. So plastics like uh, you sometimes get salad greens in a clear plastic. Sometimes you get cookies in a from a bakery in a clear plastic. Those are recyclable. But when they're black, we can't handle it. Yeah. Has the city considered a bylaw banning black plastic? That's a really good point. So the question was about bylaws banning non-recyclable plastic, specifically black plastic. The problem is that at the, we work at the municipal level and where we deal with all the things um, that we get as waste. But the manufacturers tend to manufacture and distribute internationally or provincially. So we don't really have to We need to take our concerns to a higher level. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It would make it really easy for municipalities to run recycling programs if every container was made of the same thing and looked the same. But the industries don't do that. And the industries work, you know, they, they market and distribute so broadly that it, it makes it a little bit more tricky for us. There's uh, glass bottles and they have a metal top. Mm -hmm. Are you supposed to take the top off the guard? I mean, the. You can. Yeah, we're not super picky to. about it. Yeah. And you don't so, like, say, the, I see the laundry tub there or the liquid laundry. You don't, you don't. I think you have to take the top off some of those things. But they're know. easier to flatten if the top's oh, off. But we actually like the top on because uh -huh. it produces less litter. <laughs> the problem with the lids always being off is that sometimes they get dropped and it just produces a bit of litter issue, so. Oh, the tops are okay all on. Yeah. Top of what? Oh, she was asking jar. about a jar, so whether have, to put the lid on. It's yeah. the same for so any you, kind of jar. So you have a jam jar, and it's got a, a metal top and then a glass. So you put the lid on. It on or off? You can, if you put it on, then it's less likely to become litter. So we like to have them on for that reason. <laughs> Any kind of uh, lid, like you have the plastic 
our mothers, we don't have to really uh, lean on the cup or have not only leaves. You don't have to. Yeah, smell that. And one thing I want to say about recycling is because people sometimes start to feel discouraged or intimidated with a lot of rules around it. And again, it, different municipalities can have different things in their blue bin. Um, so it can be confusing if you're going from one city to the next city, what goes in the blue bin. Don't let it stop you from putting things in. It's better to participate and make a few errors than to, than to give up, right? Um, so yeah, it's just your food containers. Let me just run through the list. Another thing I'll do is I'll leave a poster that's a copy of this. Yeah. You know? um, so it's beverage <coughs> containers. That's milk cartons, juice cartons, plastic bottles, um, aluminum cans, all those things. Tetra packs. Tetra packs, yep. Tetra packs with juice, tetra packs with soup, all of those things. Disposable plastic plates and cups, <coughs> plastic bottles and jugs, milk cartons and boxes, glass bottles and jars, aluminum cans, food plas plastic food jars, tubs and lids, so margarine containers, yogurt containers, metal cans, that even a paint can that's been emptied of the paint, you can use up all the paint, the empty can can go in, or metal soup cans, that kind of thing. Cardboard cans, that's a confusing one for people. What is a cardboard can? It's often like um, orange juice. Pringles. Yeah, Pringles, that's another example. <laughs> or nuts, or Pillsbury dough, that kind of thing. Aluminum trays, burner liners, pie plates, and roasting pans. So aluminum. Now notice this doesn't say aluminum foil. Aluminum foil is too light. It doesn't uh, recycle in our system. Oh, oh. Yeah, it goes, in goes in the garbage. Yeah. So your foils, your plastic foils like saran wrap or aluminum foil, they're not recyclable. Home and personal products in their containers. So you want to rinse these ones out too. Um, plastic bottles, plastic kitty litter tubs or a tub with a handle, plastic laundry detergent, tub or lid. Metal paint cans, clear compact disc cases, the CD case, not the CD, but the case, can go in the recycling. There's a spray can on the picture. It's aerosol. Yeah, there's a picture of Scotch Guard here. So that's an empty aerosol can. If that can was full, we actually wouldn't want it, but because it's empty, it can go in here. That's not a problem. It's only the pressurized cylinders that are a problem. And they're, they're not a problem because of the metal, they're a problem because of the pressure. Uh huh. How about light bulbs, the old fashioned ones with the little curly ones? The old fashioned ones are garbage because of the composite material. The new ones, the new twirly spirals, they're CFLs, compact fluorescent light bulbs, and they contain a very small amount of mercury. So I believe there's a special program here. You can drop them off with the superintendent. Um, when the city gets those in, too, sometimes we get them at our transfer stations or at environment days. Also, a lot of uh, box stores like Home Depot, that kind of place, often they have a take-back program. The mercury can be captured out of it and contained so it's not released into the environment. But in our program, they recycle that mercury. Fluorescent light? From fluorescent light, yeah. Yeah. You see, like, mm -hmm. the hairspray bottle, if it's empty, you can put it in. An empty hairspray bottle can go in the recycling. So foam, uh, we say foam here because um, foam poly sorry, foam polystyrene is the official name. It's also known as styrofoam. That's the brand name. Um, that can go in the recycling. Any color, any color of styrofoam can go in. And plastic bags can go in. If you have a surplus of plastic shopping bags, just put them all in one bag, and they can go in. And uh, we just, if you have bags that have a drawstring, we want you to take the string off, please. <laughs> and paper. So any paper that's clean, if it's food-related paper, like we, I mentioned earlier, um, like the muffin paper, that would go in the green bin. But if it's regular paper, that can go in the blue bin. 
along with cardboard boxes, books. Another one. <coughs> the waxing paper you get at a butcher and they wrap the meat up. That would be garbage because of the wax on it. Waxed cardboard or waxed paper is garbage. Mm -hmm. Print your cartridges. Print your cartridges often can go back to a store, printer store, where you've got it from. Um, sometimes there's take back programs also at your your hardware stores or your box stores. Rubber bands. Rubber bands. Yeah, the, the carrots come. Yeah, it's a good question. I don't think I've had that one before. I haven't really thought of it. I think it goes in the garbage. I would put not that recycling. in the garbage at home. Yeah. Uh, no, I would no, not recycling. Not for rubber. Yeah. So DVD and CD cases are recyclable, but the CDs and the DVDs themselves are garbage. <coughs> uh, you mentioned any color of foam, mm -hmm. as opposed to the plastic carton. What about black foam? There are some. Right. So the polystyrene foam is recyclable, even but the black. the black, even the black, but the plastic is not. Mm -hmm. Are the coffee cup or the gift? Really good question. Yeah, this is one of the the lesser known, more confusing points that people always ask. Is a really good question. Take out beverage containers for hot drinks. So your Starbucks Tim Hortons second cup, those hot coffee drinks, they cannot go in our blue bin system unless they're styrofoam. Just the plain styrofoam ones. Sometimes you get it at like a dentist office or something. They can go in, plain styrofoam, but the hot beverage containers, they're a composite material. They have different linings. They're lined so that the hot drink stays in it, and we can't we can't deal with them. You we mean can't like the coffee them. cups you buy? Coffee no, cups. No, the <coughs> what people can buy is they have no frills in the package. Is that is that the oh. kind of like the for coffee or drinks? Styrofoam. 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 Yeah, that, the ones that you buy in a big in a, sleeve yeah. and you have them at your party oh, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. So that's, if it's just plain styrofoam, oh, that can go in. Oh, okay. Yeah, that so you can. can. Oh, okay, you can. But okay. your takeout, right. um, yeah. you're on the road, you yeah. stop yeah. it to drive yeah. through. So you have to that we can't. Or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Newspapers. Yeah. Newspapers. Newspapers are recyable. Oh, yeah. I see. In the blue bin. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, if you ever get stumped and you're a real curious waste geek, you can always look online. We have this tool called the Waste Wizard. And you type in the item and it pops up with the answer of where it goes, which juice goes in it. Uh, if you have items such as bits of paint that are still in that can, mm -hmm. uh, are we eligible for the toxic taxi? The building is eligible for the toxic taxi, but talk to your superintendent because um, they might want to do something a little bit different. Um, so yeah, it's the, the superintendent's property managers can call 311 and have this truck, special truck called the Toxic Taxi Pickup if they have the right volume. Sometimes they like to use city services, sometimes they it's have a different thing they want to build with dry polyfill and that sort of thing. We don't really want to put that into the landfill. Right, so household hazardous waste um, are things that can be harm, harmful the water system, to humans, to animals. You want to keep those separately. Other things you can do um, if your building doesn't accept them, then you can take them to a, a take back program or a community environment day. There's another city program. You can drop them off at a transfer station. But many of us don't have cars now. So. Right. Yeah, good the, for you. In the same chance, <laughs> we are, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking off all, all the paint in other, uh, you know, There's container. We are uh, we are drying the the container, and after that, we became uh, recycled as a member. He was saying that once the paint can has been emptied no, and what dry. the paint dries, the paint can itself it's, goes in the blue yeah. bin. Oh, I realize. But we are doing that. We are doing that. We are doing that. So you can them. You have lots of painting. So you the management them. is doing that. Yeah. 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 Yes. When I go to the recycling room, I see uh, all kinds of things there. Mm -hmm. Do you sort them out? Like you have magazines there, then you have this phone, then sometimes that's a garbage. 
uh, all kinds, all mixed up. Do you sort them out or you just throw them in a big bin to be thrown away? No, you know, uh, when uh, the superintendent is doing the recycling, he has two bins. In one bin, is putting the, the, the paper and the newspaper. And another one, uh, you know, uh, bottles and uh, jars and and after that he is putting in separate bins downstairs. Automatically the paper will, you know, and the cardboard uh, cardboard boxes he is flattening and putting uh, there. Is not is uh, not uh, mix it, uh, you know, uh, uh, recycling there, you know, paper over bottles or yeah. we are sorting there. Thank you. Normally, they are they are sorted in a, in a, in a, on the floors yes. on the recycling room. Already, the residents are sorting there in a blue and gray, gray bin. Well, I do want to thank everyone for coming down. And today. The, the same, yeah. we wanted to thank uh, <laughs> Kelly from the uh, City of Toronto, and uh, of course, we wanted to thank. To all of them for this, uh, you know, numerous participation and numerous questions. Yeah. Yeah, they're